There we go. All right. Started the recording. So again, good afternoon. My name is Karen Barnes and I serve as Assistant Director for Administrative Services with Region 10. Uh, and it gives me great pleasure to be here with you talking about National Board for Professional Teaching Standards Awareness Webinar for teachers. I do know that several um, central office staff are on today and I want to welcome you as well. I love when a central office comes to listen and um, learn right along with their, um, with their colleagues. And so it's grateful to see you as well. I also want to say, um, you also will see Edwina Woods. Uh, Edwina, you want to introduce yourself? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Edwina Woods. I am program coordinator with Region 10. I'm also a National Board Certified Teacher under the best certification ever, which is uh, Early Adolescent Young Adult English Language Arts. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, we also have Shanta Plowden, who is manning our check box, and I'll leave it alone because I'm probably getting it in her way. Um, but I want to just say good afternoon to everyone. Um, as I mentioned to you, I am also the coordinator for our National Board um, for Professional Teaching Standards um, cohort that we have in Region 10. And prior to having this awesome role, um, I also had a, the pleasure of being the um, National Board facilitator in Dallas Independent School District and started the first re National Board uh, cohort that we had in the district there when I was there. And I was very proud of the great work that we did there in Dallas Independent School District and so happy to bring that, that work over to Region 10. Uh, as I've mentioned, anytime I can talk about or discuss National Board, it truly makes my heart happy. And so I am going to go ahead and get started and share with you real quickly the agenda for today. So um, let me see if I can make my slides move. It's not moving. There we go. Today's agenda, we will cover the teacher incentive allotment overview, as well as we will go through an overview of national board certification, an example of the national board timeline. We will then have some reflection from some of our national board certified teachers who are on the call with us today. And then we hope to have a healthy Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, please feel free to A, drop them in the chat box. Edwina is manning the chat box. Or if you'd like to wait to the Q&A at the end, we'd be glad to um, participate, share your questions in that, in that time frame. And then we will stay on just a little while after the meeting if you have some independent questions that you would like to ask. Okay, so this is the TIA overview. The basic concept and purpose of TIA is to pay the most effective teachers more and incentivize them to stay in the classroom. Previously, there have been limited options in order to make more money as a teacher. And um, teachers have basically um, had to all, it all involved leaving the classroom if they wanted to pursue additional funding. So this is designed to help our best teachers stay in the classroom while also increasing their earn, your earning power. In order for you as a teacher to be eligible for TIA incentives, you must be a certified teacher. You must be in a district that chooses to participate in TIA, or if they choose not to, then you can engage in um, the National Board Certification Program. Um, so districts are approved on several different criteria with the two biggest components being the teacher evaluation system and student growth systems. Um, and if a district has a solid, reliable, and valid way to show teacher effectiveness, based on the evaluation and student growth system, then they can put those teachers forward to meet the performance standards set forth by TEA. Or you can simply, um, just as I mentioned, go through national board certification. There are three levels um, that are identified as designations with the teacher incentive allotment that you see on your screen. You see recognized, exemplary, and mastered. You also see a range of under each one with salary increases that are there. The amount of money allocated with a teacher who is designated is based on the socioeconomic level of the school. And if the school is rural or non-rural, which is what you see in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, those schools with a high socioeconomic population and in a rural setting 
will have more money designated to their campus. And 90% of the funding must go toward the teacher's salary if they are national board certified on the campus where the teacher is designated. So today, as I mentioned, there are two pathways to teacher incentive allotment. And today we're going to focus in on the one with the big red arrow, which is national board certification. Um, it is an in, it's for individual teachers who achieve national board certification um, and districts may choose to support cohorts of national board candidates. Um, because once you become national board certifi certified, you automatically, whether your district has decided to be a TIA or not, um, you automatically uh, start to generate the funds. All right, so with that said, I want to take you to this important link that we have here. Um, this is called um, our uh, loading uh, landing page. Um, this is where you have an opportunity to look through um, all of the areas that support you with National Board. The first link is the Candidate Center. And in the Candidate Center, you're able to um, look through all of the things such as registration, um, to be able to look for all of the components that help you kind of organize yourself through National Board and to see how um, you can send yourself through the portfolio instructions. All of that is there at that first one, the Candidate Center. So if you ever get lost and you're not sure because National Board webpage can be kind of overbearing to walk through, always go back to the Candidate Center. It will guide you um, through the pathway. The next one you see is the Guide to National Board Certification. So it actually is a guide to kind of structure and show you how National Board is organized. Um, link three um, talks you through component one of the four components that are embedded within National Board. It is on the content knowledge assessment, um, the center policy and guidelines. So it is the biggest chunk of the scoring piece for National Board at 40%. Link Four is the, over the National Board General Portfolio Instructions, and those components um, two through four are located on that link. And then number five is if you're interested in trying to find your certificate area standards and specific component instructions, feel free to tap on link number five um, for that information. If you're ever confused and not sure or just kind of lost and you need some specific questions, you can always call 1-800-22-TEACH and that is the national board number and they will be able to assist you with any questions you may have. Edwina, can you still hear me? It's showing that my internet seems to be a little bit unstable. Yes, ma'am, you you sound fine. Yeah. Awesome, thank you very much. All right, so to be eligible to pursue National Board, as I mentioned earlier, as indicated on this slide as well, candidates must possess the following, a bachelor's degree, a valid state teaching licensure, and a minimum of three years of classroom or school counseling experience prior to starting the certification process. That is really, really important that you have those three in place. National board process itself, certification and the pursuit thereof are comprised of four components. The four components are noted here on this slide. Component one, content knowledge, which is evident through the demonstration of content knowledge at the assessment center. It is worth 40% of the overall ranking for the scoring for national board certification. Component two, differentiation in instruction as evident by student work and written commentary. It is worth 15% of the overall ranking score for national board certification. Component three, teaching practice and learning environment evidenced by video and written commentary. It is worth 30% of the overall ranking score for National Board certification. And last but certainly not least, component four, effective and reflective practitioner. Evidence through student assessment and written commentary. It is worth 15% of the overall ranking for the scoring for National Board certification. 
Chance, if we have a few people in the weight room, if you could let them in, I would appreciate that. Thank you so much. I will now go into each one very quickly um, to provide additional details into what each component encompasses. Component one, again, evidence through content knowledge, um, is a computer-based assessment that measures developmentally appropriate content knowledge and pedagogical practices in the chosen certificate area. It is comprised of three constructed response items, which candidates will have 30 minutes to complete for each, and then 45 selected response items. The time allotted varies by the certificate area, but no less than 60 minutes. We also provided some tips at the bottom. The assessment centers uh, will be prepared to accept appointments and candidates who are scheduled should do so once they receive authorization via an email or a text message from national board. They do provide accommodations as well. And you will see that we have uh, a typical, if you are a current candidate, you will see under the second bullet that the window for testing is April the 8th through July the 15th. Component two, this component again is worth 15% and it looks at the ability of the candidate to evaluate learning strengths and needs for the individual students within the teacher's classroom to plan and implement appropriate instruction and to analyze and modify strategies and materials based on ongoing assessments. This is a classroom-based portfolio entry. It will be comprised of a sampling of student work, which will also have a video for those candidates pursuing music and will demonstrate um, student growth over time. Additionally, it will also have an accompanying written commentary that's required that analyzes the candidate's instructional choices as outlined within component two. Component three is teaching practice and learning environment. Again, we're 30% and it highlights how candidates engage students and impact their learning. This is also a classroom-based portfolio entry and it will be comprised of video recordings and interactions between candidates and their students. The interactions are intended to be diverse. This information is outlined within the component directions. There are also two written commentaries required as a part of this component. The candidate will describe analyze and reflect on their teaching and interactions within the classroom. Component four, effective and reflective practitioner, worth 15%, will highlight an understanding of assessments and assessment practices to plan for and positively impact student learning. This portfolio entry information is gathered from diverse sources and is intended to practice with a class of students to provide evidence of collaboration with families, community, and colleagues, and to demonstrate a candidate's contribution to learning communities to advance student growth. The time frame for a teacher to complete the process uh, may look like this. If you are a teacher who, who's pursuing national board currently, um, you could potentially start with component one. Um, and the time frame would be um, the assessment window is April the 8th through July the 15th, 2021. And after you registered for this component, you will receive an email when it is time for you to schedule your appointment with the assessment center. If you go down to the three e-portfolios that are submitted um, between May 1st and June the 16th, um, component two um, and component three, um, the period for evidence collection begins 12 months prior to the opening date of the e-portfolio submission window, which will be May 1st, 2020. 
The evidence of that will be your student work and written commentary for component two. And for component three, we would have the video recording and the written commentary. And then component four, which is 15%. And for this component only, the class group and assessment that you feature must come from the time frame that begins 12 months prior to the opening date of the e-portfolio submission window, which would be May 1st, 2020. However, the identification of the professional learning need and a student need and actions taken to address those needs may occur up to 24 months, which will put you at May 1st, 2019, prior to the opening date of the e-portfolio submission window. But evidence of the impact on student learning of the action taking place to address the needs must be gathered between no more than 12 months prior to the opening date of the e-portfolio submission window, which will put your date at May 1st, 2020. And your evidence of that will be the student assessment and the written commentary. Here's another overarching view of the timeline. So the registration window is now. Um, for those who are currently, as you can see, the 2020, 2021, we do not have 21, 22 to share. So we can only share with you what we have at the moment, which is the current uh, national board um, candidates going through the process. And so you will see the registration deadline um, includes a $75 non-transferable, non-refundable fee. Um, and that is due by April the 30th, along with the component selection that you decide to submit. Um, any changes to your certification? So if you started with one and you decided you wanted to go into another certificate or specialty area, that change has to be complete by April the 30th. And then uh, solidify your component selections on that same date. And also withdraw. If you decide I'm starting this, I'm, I'm working on it, but I just don't know whether I can finish. You have to withdraw um, by the April the 30th deadline. And then your e-portfolio submission window is May 1st through June the 16th for components two, three, and four. And um, you also have our score release. It will be on or, or before December the 31st, 2021. Um, we always, they typically come around Thanksgiving because we always say it's going to be a good turkey day or a bad turkey day, depending on what you get. But um, what they do give themselves on or before December the 30, 31st to um, provide the scores. The framework and the pursuit of certification lie within the accomplished teaching body of knowledge. Um, the basis is the five core propositions that you see on the screen in front of you. They are comp comprised of Prop 1, teachers are committed to students and their learning. Prop 2, teachers know the subjects they teach and how to teach those subjects to students. Prop 3, teachers are responsible for managing and monitoring student learning. Prop 4, teachers think systematically about their practice and learn from experience. And Prop 5, teachers are members of learning communities. Um, so these five core propositions, along with the architecture of accomplished teaching and the national board standards, make up the accomplished teaching body of knowledge that candidates will utilize to frame and provide a demonstration of evidence of their professional learning through the pursuit of national board certification. These will serve as a foundation for all the work you will do as a candidate. You will become intimately familiar with these five core propositions, being able to identify them within your own body of work, but um, not only in your own body of work, but also in the work of your colleagues as well. These props are housed on the website below in an interactive fashion in which you can read and learn more about as you start your process of becoming certified. And that's the accomplishedteaching.org link that you see at the bottom of the screen shared with you at the moment. There are 25 certificate areas and 16 disciplines um, you as a teacher can pursue for national board. 
um, you are, they are identified on this slide and can be viewed on the National Board website. I'm gonna give you just 30 seconds to kind of look that over. So I won't go through them all, but see if you can identify where you may land uh, on this slide. Certificate area is really, really important. Um, as you can see, there were tons of them on the slide previous, um, but making sure that you pick the right certificate area is going to be really, really, really important. Um, so we did provide for you, a, the, the title is a hyperlink and it takes you to the certificate areas for you to kind of dig a little bit more into and research so that you can choose the right one that works for you. What you see on the screen now is the architecture of accomplished teaching that I mentioned previously as part of the accomplished teaching body of knowledge. It is aligned with the five core propositions. The double helix indicates also the frame that you would that would help guide you um, through the teaching and learning that takes place inside your classroom. As you look at the helix and you see the advances of the knowledge of students, aligned with the core proposition one to the sixth stage where you are setting high and worthwhile goals that are appropriate for your students aligned with the core propositions are shared on the screen in front of you. I will tell you, this tends to be the, the um, most interesting and most challenging as I have to be very honest for many teachers to wrap their minds around because you have to go beyond your base or your curriculum that's embedded within front of you. Because really, honestly, this is about you and what you do, understanding the five core props, your standards, and how you make this uh, accomplished, the architecture of accomplished teaching um, twine together to make a, 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 a cohesive um, dialogue that you give to your students and how you think about your practice as a teacher that will ultimately impact student learning and student growth. So the timeline considerations for completing certification, as I mentioned to you earlier, there are four components. They can be taken in any order, um, but in our cohort, we tend to follow a structure that we think works well. Um, we start with components one and two, and then we will do, um, in the second year, we will do components three and four. You have to have all four components submitted um, by the third year of your national board certification process. You can, however, submit all four in one year if you choose to do so. Um, that is an option, um, but in our cohort, we tend to just take it a little bit slower so you have time to process, but you can do it. Um, components must be completed during the cycle in which you, they are purchased. Meaning, you don't wanna pay the entire national board certification process all at one time, unless you're going to submit all in the same time frame. If you're going to take two in the first year, then you only need to pay for those two components and then pay for the other two components in the next assessment cycle. You have five years to complete the certification process. Um, you have three years to complete all components, but if you don't receive the score that you want as an accomplished score and you don't become national board certified, you have five years to um, become certified making, doing any retakes that are necessary for you to reach that goal. Um, if you do not reach it after year five, then you will have to start the process over and submit all four components again. So you may ask, what is the cost um, for this process? And I'm going to share with you right now, only the national board fees. These are the national board fees that you see in red. So you have to pay $75 non-refundable, non-transferable registration fee um, that's paid for each assessment cycle. Meaning if you are still in the process of pursuing your national board certification after three years, each year you will have to pay the $75 non-transferable, non-refundable fee. $475 fee is, is, is required for each uh, component that you purchase. The components can be purchased and paid for separately at any time prior to the registration deadline 
for each assessment cycle. And you, as again, you should only purchase the components that are plan that you're planning to submit during that assessment cycle. You've noticed that I've said that a couple of times because that's really, really important. Okay. So also what you see in front of you, you'll see where are the National Board Certified Teachers in the United States? So you will see the title is hyperlinked. Um, with a directory of all the National Board Certified Teachers that we have across the United States. I will tell you this list is not all the way accurate. It is only um, as good as what the candidates go in and um, submit to National Board, meaning if they're in one district uh, when they start their process or complete their process, it will be listed under that district. But if they move three years later and go to another school district and they don't go back in, and change their district in the, in the directory, then it's only gonna show the last thing that has been uploaded from the candidate into the system. But it's a great place to start to see where the teachers are, um, the National Board teachers are in the United States and in, your, in our state of Texas. Here is the Region 10 National Board upcoming programs that we have. We have the Region 10 National Board cohort that is a two-year commitment with a third-year option for this cohort. And then we also talked earlier on about the Professional Learning Facilitator Program. It's a hybrid model that your district can pursue if they choose to do a um, built-in process of just having a cohort on campus. Um, and that is a one-year commitment. But for today, I'm going to talk to you about the, national, the Region 10 National Board Cohort, the two-year commitment. So as you see on this screen, there is a two-year cohort um, fee. This fee is not the same fee for the national board fees. This is a region 10 fee that is separate from the national board fees. We are a support system for you, a support program. And so this is the support program um, fee. The $2,000 that's there will cover your two years of services. And if you have to have a third year option, that amount is $700 for that, for that option. Um, we, as you can see on the, the, um, the pathway here, um, let me just let this person in the room, there we go. Um, you will see um, we have a cohort of about 25 teachers max. There is a application process with an interview uh, with a national board panel. Um, if you are selected, you will attend our three-day conference in July, you will be partnered with two national board facilitators, as well as attend our 10 monthly sessions. They are on Saturday, so we do not interrupt your school day. Um, it's typically one Saturday out of a month. And then at the end of this, the result is for you to become a national board certified teacher. So what do you get? You are assigned um, the two facilitators, but you are also assigned a National Board Certified Teacher Mentor. We typically, we're not always able to do it, but we try really, really hard to pair you up with someone that is a National Board Certified Teacher in the certificate area in which you are pursuing. Um, you also receive, again, the three-day conference, which is pretty much like the pre-candidacy portion of the process. Again, you have 10 cohort monthly meetings in year one. You will submit your two national board components. And then in year two, you will have 10 additional monthly meetings for your submission of the next two entry submissions. Um, if you need a third year retake year, we will have five cohort meetings with that for that additional fee of $700. And you will resubmit, um, any, do any retakes of anything you need to become an accomplished teacher. This is information on our hybrid model that I won't go through. We went through this earlier, but it is on the slide for you to, to look at and view if you choose to do so. If your district decides, they say, hey, we're gonna have this um, program, then you have a little bit of information about how that works. Um, I realize right now that I'm gonna stop sharing and take you to the, the, another timeline, I think. Let me take you real quickly to the web page, and I wanted to share with you real quickly where you can find a lot of information that we have there. And it's a different timeline, so I will upload that for you and put that change in. I just realized that. 
So let me share my screen. And I will walk you through where you can find all the information about the timeline, as well as the application process for, for Region 10. Can you see, Edwina, you're in my corner view. Can you see the page? Perfect, thank you. So once you come to the region10.org, this is our homepage, you will go to programs, you go to search our programs and you will type in national board, hit submit, and then it will take you to our teacher incentive allotment page. At the top, the second tab is national board cohort. You will select that. And here we have information about the, the teacher incentive allotment for the state of Texas, information that takes you to the national board website, and then also the Region 10 National Board Cohort. Um, and the first thing I want to talk, talk to you about would be the timeline for teachers pursuing National Board. For us, this would be our track one timeline. So I'm going to click this link that will give you the dates for our 21, 22 upcoming uh, application timeline. So the application is available today. The deadline for you to submit your application is Friday, April the 23rd at 4.30 p.m. The application screens and interviews are April the 27th through May 10th. Um, if you are selected to be a part of the cohort, you will receive an email on Friday, May the 14th, whether you, uh, you are selected or not. Um, and then from there, we will have um, our National Board Conference in July. The dates are there, so you will already know to make plans. And then our very first cohort meeting will be Saturday, August the 14th. I'm going to take you back to the webpage. And I'm going to go over to um, the National Board Cohort. I'm tabbing over on the right-hand side of the menu in the, in the gray area. And so again, this is just a little bit of information about just a quick paragraph about our track one program, the two-year program, the fees, as I mentioned to you earlier. And then you will see right here in the green, the National Board for Teachers application. It's right here for you. You will just simply download it, complete it. You, I want to just go down a little bit. It's asking you quite a few questions that are intentional questions. Utilize all the space that's embedded there to answer your questions because your application is scored as part of your process of, of the interview. Um, you have to have a commitment letter on file that is signed by you as well as your, your current principal. Um, and then there is a recommendation form that goes to your current principal that they do not send back to you. They just email it back to us. And then you also have a recommendation form from a professional colleague, and they just email that back to us. So what you would send back to, to, to me um, would be just the top part from um, here, the top part to down to the last question, question six, and then the other documents will come from your principal or your professional colleague. Okay, I think I am down to the sharing portion of the process. And so I just want to see, did Doretha make it on? Is Doretha on? I don't believe so, Karen. No worries. Then I'm gonna stop and just have Edwina to share um, a little bit about her journey of becoming National Board Certified and what this has um, actually um, been for her. She's had multiple opportunities um, um, in multiple facets of her career to um, um, exhibit the things that she's learned at National Board. And so I'm going to give you a few minutes, about three minutes, Edwina, to share your process and then we'll come back. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. So let me first start off by saying National Board, becoming a National Board Certified Teacher was a turning point in my life. 
um, I think I was about 10, 10 years in into teaching and I was really getting ready to leave. I was, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm through. <laughs> but um, Dallas, I was with Dallas, sent out an informational session and a friend that I was working with, she said, hey, let's go to this. Let's see what it is. Because I was always working, trying to be the best teacher that I could be for my kids. Um, high school, I was a high school English teacher. And so we went to the session and that's where I met Karen and um, Holly Gamble, Holly's not on, and Doretha Allen. Dor Dr. Doretha Allen was my mentor as I went through the national board. So I went through the process. I was like, well, hey, let me, let me try this. Let me see you know, how do I change my own practice? And so one of the things that you'll hear NBCTs talk about is that you are your research topic. There is no perfect answer. You are developing your perfect answer. So the response that Chloe might write is not gonna be the response that Chris might write because you have different kids. The response that Sandra might write is not the same that Chantel might write. So it's about you, your kids at that time. And that really uh, helped me because I had uh, a classroom of all black male students and it really made me dig into what am I doing for my babies, high school football players, for my babies at this particular time to make sure that I'm providing them the best service possible as an educator. And so went through the process. As Karen said, not everyone certifies the first time around. Uh, I did certify. We did the take one. And then the next year I submitted the three components. So I certified my first time around. And it was strictly due to the support provided by Karen, the work that Dr. Allen made me engage in, and the support group. Um, since then, I've been an administrator. I was an administrator for six years with Dallas. And I'm telling you, when I talk to teachers, to my teachers about being an instructional leader, I, I know exactly what I'm talking about. I know some of the best practices. And if I don't, I know where to go and look for that, right? Um, I know how to make sure that I'm being precise and, and identifying those support pieces for my teacher. So national board certification, it, it, it just changes the way you think. It is the best professional development. And that's not just said by NBCTs. It's been around since 1987. The research done out of Stanford, done out of North Carolina, Washington State, Mississippi State. You can check any state, California, and you will see that the impact of National Board Certified Teachers is not just in the classroom, but it's also outside the classroom, all right? So this is gonna be well worth your time. It is transformational. And I, I, I'm going through recertification now myself. I certified in 2011, originally with a 10-year, and now I'm doing my five-year maintenance of certification. So if you guys have any questions, any concerns, please stay on, put them in the chat. NBCTs love to talk about National Board Certification. I'm through, Karen. Thank you so very much. I see a few more National Board Certified Teachers on. Tina. If you could, uh, I'm just gonna let you talk. I know, uh, Teresa, you have a ton of people on from Dallas. Many of them called and said, we're running over to Hillcrest so we Hillcrest. can be part. So we know that you have a lot of people there and I see them all behind you. So Teresa, I'm gonna let you talk right after Tina. If we could just do a quick two minutes so that we can have time for a Q and A, that would be very helpful but I do want you to talk about your journey of why you pursued National Board because you all did it when there was no money involved. And I will tell you right now, if you were doing this only, and I mean only for the pay, this is probably not the, 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 the avenue you want to pursue. Let me just let that sink in just real quickly. Um, and it's because the amount of work that is embedded into national board, you have to want to do better um, and think about as a teacher, I want to do the best I can and hone in on my practice um, because the amount of work and the amount of process of how you think through national board um, is not worth the money. <laughs> it's not worth the money. So you really want to uh, really think through it, but it is the best professional development that you will ever receive as an educator, um, hands down, hands down. 
Uh, it will challenge you and it will make you think about your practice. Here's the thing. Many people that have gone through our process of becoming national board certified have got received their doctorate degrees. And many of them say it's, it's harder getting national board than getting their doctorate degree. And I will tell you why they say that. It because it they think about it very differently. When you're getting your your when you're working on your dissertation or you're looking at some information that someone else have and you're putting your perspective on it, you're analyzing what they have. In National Board, you are the research project. You are analyzing your own practice. You are looking through your why did you say that? Why did you do this? What, what made me think that way? What does an accomplished teacher do? What does an accomplished teacher say? So those are things, you are the research project. What do you specifically do? And remember, the, the basal, the curriculum that we have relied on um, is not receiving the certification. This is you talking about what you know as an accomplished teacher, what decisions that you make and why you make them in the moment with those students at that time. All right, I just wanted to throw that in there because that is really, really important when you're making an informed decision. All right, uh, Tina, two minutes. Hi, I'm Tina Floyd and I was a teacher, I'm retired now, but I was a teacher at Skyline High School and I'm national board certified and um, I started out, I was always really involved on campus. I, I always wanted to try to make the campus better and my teaching as well. And I was pro teaching pre professional development and just doing a lot of things in addition to my teaching. And I always felt like there was something more that I could do, but I just didn't know what it was. And then um, I saw an advertisement for, well, I got an email about the cohort that was forming and I got into the cohort and I worked with Karen and um, with um, Dr. Dorothea. I can't think of her last name for some reason. But uh, anyway, I got in with her, with, with her, worked with her, and they pushed me really hard. And it was totally worth it. Everything that I did there was uh, making me think. It made me think about what I did and why I did it. And it... It helped me understand more about my students and what their needs were. And it was just, it was kind of, it was, it was life-changing. It is the best professional development that I've ever done. But it was a lot of work. You would need to be prepared to put some work into it. You're gonna be spending some long nights. It is a lot of work. But for me, it was definitely worth it and I've never regretted it. Thank you, Tina. Teresa? Good afternoon. So you're here because you're that teacher who does everything for their students. And National Board is going to make you the teacher that you want to be for your students. The research shows that a student that has a National Board certified teacher in front of them is going to do better academically and emotionally. But I will tell you that you're about to start a journey that is going to be so self-fulfilling that you won't want to leave the classroom. And I, and I hope that's the journey for you because um, we have so many great teachers that can't afford to stay in the classroom because they're not being paid. And I'm happy that the state realized that you need to incentivize classroom teachers. But enjoy this journey. It will make you the best teacher you can be. You will no longer be that good teacher. You will be a great teacher. There will never be anything in your, in your way that you will not have the tools to figure out the answers are hard, this journey is hard, and you will cry because it is time consuming along with all that other things. And I, I don't mean to, to frighten you, but I wanna give you a taste of reality that this is, this is that master's dissertation 
that your professor tore up 101 times and you're redoing it one more time. But the end is something good for our students. And, and those of you who are here today are here because you love your students and you are going to be better prepared to be for your students. And I hope there's some of you that are science because when you go on that website and you check out the state of Texas and the number of teachers that are certified, national board certified in science, secondary science, it's gonna be less than 40 for the entire state. And if you're from DISD, you're looking at your only national board certified secondary science teacher. And I'm retiring, so somebody's got to replace me. You guys, come on, let's do this. Thank you, only Teresa can tell it to us in Teresa's way, right? So uh, thank you, Teresa, thank you, Tina, and thank you, Edwina, for sharing um, the process of becoming a National Board Certified Teacher. As, as Teresa said, we don't want to scare you, but we do want to let you know that anything worth having is worth working for, right? And so once you get into it, and that's why we are so grateful to have this cohort, because you don't have to do it by yourself. You can. You can do this on your own. But it makes it so the journey easier when you have someone that's with you and have gone through that journey before and walk with you and say, let's just do this chunk right now so that you don't feel overloaded and overwhelmed and walk you through that. And then you come back and you meet with your mentor and they're walking you through. Let's, let's see what you have right now. They encourage you. They, you know, they provide support. They help you understand it. Um, that's what you get by being a part of the Region 10 National Board cohort. So you may look at that, and I just wanted to reiterate, our fees are different from the National Board fees. That was one question that I did receive, again, in the chat box. They're two totally different. We are a support program to help you through your journey of National Board. Um, but it is well worth it. We, we, we hold your hand for two solid years um, so that you don't have to walk this journey by yourself. I'm gonna open the floor for, the, we have about um, eight minutes left before we, seven now, before we leave. And I'm going to allow you to ask any questions that you may have. You can unmute yourself or you can simply place it in the chat box. Hey, Karen, I answered uh, a question from Kristen Orr. Uh, and her question was, is the cohort program only offered once a year? I did, I did respond, yes, it's once a year. But the teacher program that Karen just talked about is a two-year uh, commitment. So you make it in this year, you're, well, this 2021-22. It would be 2021-22 and then 22-23. All right, so. Okay, thank you, Edwina, for answering that. Um, also, I see a ton of questions in coming in the chat box now. <laughs> Jennifer, Nash, I've been watching you the whole time. Jennifer, it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it says, you asked, does the cohort help prepare you for the content knowledge portion? And I'm assuming you're talking about component one. Mm -hmm. um, we, mm -hmm. yes, we spend a lot of time uh, for each one of the components. We prepare you for those components. We, are, we don't leave you out there alone at all. You, each one, you will get tons of support for each component. Valerie asks, is this a program that our districts will pay for? Valerie, you would have to ask your district. Um, each individual district is making that decision. And so you would have to definitely ask um, your, your district for that. Amy asks, if I am now finishing my third year, can I still apply for the April deadline this year? No, you have to complete your third year um, before you can start to even pursue national board. Karen, let me um, ask this question. Is she, okay. is she finishing 2021, which means she can apply for the 22-23? Oh, is that what for you're asking, upcoming, Amy? Yeah, for let me make this, sure. Yeah, the April dates are people who are already in national board. So if she yes. leaves for the upcoming group, the group that we're doing this information session for, she can still apply, right? Because we haven't even yes, opened that yes. window I thought yet. she meant, when she said this year, I thought she was meaning to try to say about getting into this current cohort. That no, answer is no. no, but if you're interested in applying, like Edwina said, Amy, 
for our 21-22, then you would have finished your your um, third year and you can apply um, right. for national for our cohort. For the next, like I can start this next school year. Yes. yes. Okay. Great, thank you Edwina for that because I didn't read that in there. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, I hope I said this right, Eula? Um, Ulia. Ulia? Ulia. About how much time <laughs> Will you spend weekly? Um, that depends on you. Um, so it depends on how much time you actually, we find that most cohort candidates, and this is on your application, can typically spend about 300 to 700 hours on national board certification over the whole course of time. Not in a year, but over the whole course of time. So it just depends on how well you engage in the, in the we kind of give you a range, but it's just kind of built on um, we do ask though that you that you set aside time to um, you know to that you have to have some time set aside designated for pursuing national board. Um, okay, it's going really fast. I taught in Virginia for seven years, and this is my second year in Texas. I qualify. Correct, you do. It doesn't specify where you have to have your certification. It just says you have to have a certification. Um, so yes to you, Amy. Um, let's see. Do I need to, I had a question, sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I'm the one that taught in Virginia. Do I need to show them my Virginia license and my Texas license then in my application? So no, they, well, let me see. Um, I don't think you do. I think you want to show them your teacher one because they can uh, they can pull that up and be able to see that you've taught seven years. Um, the only ones that we have to um, show the additional if, if you taught overseas or something like that, then they will need some documentation, but everything else in the United States, you don't have to do that. Yeah, because for Texas, I only have, um, I got, I was on, uh, well, I moved here and then um, yeah. uh, emergency, well, they give you an emergency license for the first year. And then I got my certification, my, my license, like last February, they, they transferred mine from Virginia. So do I just show my Texas one then? Yeah. So it doesn't specify where you have to be because national board is for anywhere in the, in the United States, right? So as long as you were certified somewhere and you're certified currently, then you qualify and you have the amount of years in your qualification. Great questions. Karen. Uh, where can we get, oh, I'm sorry. Karen, and, and that's another advantage of national board because once you certify national board with national board certification, you can walk in almost every state in this country and never have to take their certification test again. You, you can transfer your certification from state to state. That is so true. Okay, um, where can we get help for financing? Go to your district, Joanna. Um, it says, you, you said 4,000 mini districts because the money for national board fees can be reimbursed once you receive certification. Um, your district can um, apply for reimbursement of the 1950 for your national board certification. They just can't ask for that for the Region 10 support program. But if you become national board certified, your district can then ask um, the state to reimburse, there's a form that they fill out to get reimbursed, whether you pay it or whether your district pays on your behalf. Doesn't matter. That money, they can recoup that 1950 of the national board fees. That is what's written in the teacher incentive allotment. So I hope that helps. Um, I am a French teacher certified from France. I've been teaching for 11 years. I've been in Texas since uh, five years. Uh oh. Um, and teaching in a private school, if I want to be a part of the program, I'll have to get a state licensure first, right? I have a certificate. Um, Chloe, will you send me an email and I'll get the information for you? Okay. Edwina, can you drop my email address? Oh, it's on the actual, it's on the last slide, I believe, my email address. Um, what do we have to do to get recertified? Great question. So there is a maintenance of certification. Um, after five years. Um, and Edwina Woods is going through that process right now. Um, so um, she can talk a little bit more about the, the maintenance of certification process. 
So the maintenance of certification, um, I pay the registration fee and then it's just the one fee and it has two components. So it's like 75 registration. And I believe I'm paying 475 or something like that for the component. So when you initially go through, you have four components, but for maintenance and certification, it's really just one piece with two different components inside of it. I have to talk about the work and the growth I've done uh, in my certification area since I last certified. So um, I get two opportunities to talk about that. And then I have to do a video component still teaching as well. So you, you still have to be doing the work in order to uh, maintain your, so I don't have to be in a classroom or assign two kids, which obviously I'm not working at Region 10, but I have partnered with some of my old campuses to, uh, to fulfill that second component of becoming board certified. And it doesn't take as long. They have a 95, 90 something percent uh, success rate for maintenance of certification. Thank you, Edwina. I'm sorry, we, I don't know a whole lot about it because we just started, they just started the maintenance of certification process. Um, prior to 2019, I think it was, you could do the uh, the okay, renewal yeah. process. Mm -hmm. And we, we knew a lot about the renewal, but now they're going through the new process, which is called a five-year program, which is the maintenance of certification. Um, Amanda, I answered your question in the chat. Uh, Bush fam, I did answer your, your question. You asked um, your special education teacher, you want to sign up. It can, do you need to um, um, do a specific content certification? No. There is a certification that is called Exceptional Needs. It is for those that are um, actually um, special education teachers or TAG teachers. Anything of that nature goes under that Exceptional Needs Specialist. Is the National Certification valid for Puerto Rico? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. All right. I think we have every question that is in the chat box. I hope you found this very informative so that you can make an informed decision um, for yourself. We look forward, everyone um, is aware of where they can go to find the application. Yes, Julia? Julia, you have a question? Uh, Julia, you raised your hand. Karen, while Julia's coming on, I, I think I'm sorry. I know we have some private schools on here. And so private schools are good, or if they have questions, they can contact you as well, right? Because I see uh, Dr. Gras, Dr. Gosby here from OCBF. Yes, as long as you are a, if you, as long as you meet those eligibilities, it does not matter where you um, land or you teach. So if you have the uh, eligibility, three years um, teaching, minimum three years, so you are a certified teacher, um, then you you qualify um, to um, pursue national board. Someone is asking, will you be sharing the slides? Edwina, can you put that over in the chat box for them? Um, and then, yes, we will be sharing the recorded video with everyone that's on the call for today. All right, I think we'll end it right there. Um, thank you so very much for being a part. We look forward to seeing your applications and being a part of our next 21-22 National Board Cohort. Thank you so very much for your time today. Have a great afternoon. Jesse.